What's up everybody? Today we're going to be changing out some engine mounts on a 2013 Nissan Murano. Fair warning, the mount you just saw is a dealer part. All the part stores will give you the rear mount, but they don't have the front, so keep that in mind. Now there's a lot of tips in this video that will make your life easier, so be sure to watch at least until we get the old mount out. The biggest challenge with this job is space. So we're going to have to remove a lot of components so we can get access to the front engine mount. First, the air intake piping and battery need to come out. After that, the bolts and cables that hold down the computer need to come out. These wire harness clips can be a pain. Just insert a screwdriver into the slot, push in and pull up at the same time the harness should come free. Next up we need to remove the bolts that hold the computer bracket in place. It helps to remove the plastic battery tray first. Because these bolts sit underneath the battery, rust can be an issue. So you want to be sure to spray PB Blaster or something like it and let those soak for a while so they come free easier. As always, this action cam shot is brought to you by a dad's guide to saving and investing. Be sure to click on the link below in the description box and check it out on Amazon. Seriously, the Kindle copy is like a dollar and you're going to save hundreds if not thousands of dollars in the first year alone if you follow the concepts laid out in the book. Back to the Nissan, in order to remove the metal tray under the battery, there's a small sensor of some kind that needs to be unclipped. I don't know what it does or what it is, but we aren't unhooking anything from it. We're just taking it off the metal plan, so it really doesn't matter. Just put a screwdriver in that, lift up, it comes free, and move it out of the way. Now we can remove the metal tray as well as the computer. The next challenge is taking off the two 10 millimeter bolts that connect the battery support bracket to the wire harness. Then remove the two bolts that connect the bracket to the frame of the vehicle. Now that that's out of the way, you need to remove the cover on the bottom of the vehicle to gain access to the radiator drain. Caution, warning. You should let the vehicle completely cool off before messing with anything in the coolant system. And now here it is, we have our first glance at this engine mount and you can see that there isn't enough room for us to take it out of the bottom without having to remove the radiator. So that's why we will be taking it out top side. However, we will need to take off a radiator hose, so while we're down here, let's drain some of the coolant out first so we don't soak everything. Just follow the bottom of the radiator hose to the passenger side of the vehicle, and you should see a small white tube. Inside is a Phillips head drain screw, and we just need to break it loose and let it drain. Keep in mind, I'm not removing it, I'm just backing it out a little. To help the fluid drain faster, remove the radiator cap. Now, we'll remove that top radiator hose.
Then, tighten up the coolant drain plug and move the fluid out of the way. Taking the hose off of the bottom of the radiator cap is a pain, but it is worth it for the extra room that you'll get. Next, just unclip the plugs that connect to the radiator fan assembly and remove the two 10mm bolts on the top on either side. When you begin to slide the fans out, move very slowly and cautiously. The last thing you want to do is rip through a wiring harness or nick a wire for it to cause problems for you later. This job is hard enough as it is, you don't need to complicate it by trying to go too fast. Alright, now that we have full access to that front mount, we need to chalk the wheels. There's only one vacuum line that attaches to the mount. It has a solid metal line with three bolts holding it on. So just undo those and then move that mount out of the way. We'll have to hook that back up first later. You'll need a small block of wood to go between the jack and the transmission pan, so go ahead and have that ready. You'll notice I'm using the vehicle scissor jack here, and I prefer you do the same. With this jack, we can fine tune the position up and down very easily, and we don't have to worry about losing pressure like a hydraulic jack might. Remember, we aren't trying to lift the vehicle here, we just want a little pressure so that the engine will hold up in the same position when we remove that mount. Now for the most important tip out of this entire video. You need a 24 inch extension, a universal joint, a six inch extension, and a swivel socket. This setup makes it very simple to remove that rear bolt on the engine mount. I'm going to zoom in here so you can see it, but it's much easier to do this from the top rather than trying to reach under the engine where you have no clearance. Next, we're going to keep that 24 inch extension on but use a regular socket to remove the nut on the stud of that engine mount. And here's the second most important tip. Use some channel locks to break the stud loose and remove it completely. Doing this helps you keep the mounting bracket attached to the engine and will save you a big headache. Don't worry about damaging the threads because the new mount is going to come with a new stud. Now just take off the two front bolts of the engine mount which are easy to reach.
Now, this is the actual clip of me removing it, but I put my hand in the way. Rookie mistake on my part. But the final most important tip is this pry bar I'm pointing to here at the end. Now, this is a reenactment, but the pry bar is used to slightly lift the front of the engine and give me a little bit of clearance to slide that mount out. Now, I am over 200 pounds, so this isn't that difficult for me, but if you are on the lighter side, you can use that scissor jack to fine tune the height and just raise it a little bit higher, but don't get too crazy with it. Now, here's a few clips of how I routed that pry bar. You'll want to go over the lower frame beneath the radiator, and we are sliding that bar right underneath the transmission, but be sure to place the end of the bar underneath the metal bolt as shown here, I don't think you would damage the case, but I definitely wouldn't want to take that risk and put the pry bar directly against it. Here you can see that the engine is being held up only by the scissor jack. Now at this point, I wouldn't let anyone get in the vehicle or bounce the vehicle up and down because if that happens, if the suspension goes down, the engine is going to try to go down, but the scissor jack is going to push it up and that could damage some of the other mounts that it's still attached to. We can also see how worn out this old mount is now compared to the replacement. Take notice of this oval shaped metal piece with two straight sides. This has to slide underneath the bracket perfectly or it will not seat properly. Here, let's show you the underside of this mounting bracket so you can see what I'm talking about. Before we install the new mount, we'll need to take off the stud very carefully so we do not damage the threads. There should be enough of the stud so you can grab the top of it without even touching the threads, but just in case, use the nut to protect the threads in case your channel locks slip. Okay, now we are ready to slide the new mount into place. Don't forget to use your leverage on that pry bar to give you enough clearance for it to slide in. Now we can put the engine mount stud back into place and get all the bolts started. We'll tighten everything down and don't forget the setup to reach that back bolt. This is definitely a time saver.
Next, we'll hook up that vacuum line and attach the three bolts that secure it. No need for the jack anymore, so remove that and we can start putting the fans back in. Make sure you hook those electrical connections up before you reinstall that top radiator hose. If you're like me and too lazy to get a funnel, this Coke bottle fits the radiator opening like a glove. Then pour in the coolant we removed from earlier. Now we can start installing the battery bracket in those 10 millimeter bolts that were a pain from earlier, but I did find that a gearless ratchet works perfectly in this situation. I'll probably make a separate video to address that, but gearless ratchets have no back drag so they are perfect in a tight spot like this. Now just put the battery pan back in and we can install the computer mounting bolts. Don't forget to plug in all your connectors and reinstall some zip ties so that they don't come unplugged. Next, I have to put the air box back in because I took it out so I could get a better shot for you guys. Then we can reinstall the battery, hook up the connections, and put the air intake piping back on.
Now as a bonus, I'm gonna show how to change the top side engine mounts as well. For these two, you wanna move your jack underneath the oil pan, and same as before, just put a small amount of pressure on it. The engine torque mount is a little tricky because you have to work underneath the firewall, but it's definitely not bad compared to the one we just did. To gain some clearance to remove the bolt that connects the mount to the engine, we'll unscrew the bolts to this tank. No need to drain it, we just need to be able to move it a little bit. And simple as that, it's out. The other mount attaches to a black plate, but as you can see me doing here, just go ahead and remove the four bolts that connect that plate to the vehicle frame. We can install the new mount on the plate much easier outside the vehicle. Then remove the three nuts that connect the mount to the engine, and you should have enough room to slide it out, especially if you took that tank off like I told you to earlier. Here you can see how loose that mount was getting. Next we need to remove one bolt to take the old mount off of the plate. It's got a lot of torque on it so you will need a good breaker bar, but you can use a vise or pry bar like I'm doing here to keep it from spinning. Now that we've got the plate on the new engine mount, it's much stiffer when I try to move it. When you put this back on the vehicle, install the four bolts for the black plate and the three nuts that go to the engine by hand and leave them all loose. Once they are all started, you can begin tightening them up with a ratchet and torquing them. If you torque one of these down first, it's going to be nearly impossible to start the other ones. Speaking of torque, check out the tear on the engine torque mount. It extends all the way through the rubber on both sides. Once a tear like that starts, it only gets worse faster and faster as there is less rubber to hold in place each time. Now same rules for this mount. Get both bolts started by hand first, then torque them down. As for everything in this video, please check your maintenance manual for the torque values of your particular year and your model. That's all I've got for you guys today. I hope I was able to share some tips with you that will make your life easier. If you like this content, be sure to like and subscribe, and don't forget to check out those links in the description box of this video. That's it for today. You guys have an awesome day.